Hello everybody and welcome to Move 78. I really don't know anything about this game other than the fact that it's sort of inspired by the uh, Zero Escape series and I'm a pretty good big fan of those so I figured I'd enjoy the game. So there's not really much else to say other than let's get into it. It's been two hours since Erin last heard the sounds of chaos, death, and gunfire. With a pained groan, he squeezes out of his hiding place and drags himself onto his feet. Damn it. I thought we were supposed to be safe here. What am I supposed to do now? Erin pulls his sleeve and checks the display on the device that's attached to his arm. Still nothing? Cautiously, he begins moving towards the end of the corridor, mishalted halted when a strange distortion appears, like a breach in reality. Greetings, humans. Shit! A grotesque humanoid creature appears in front of him. It seems to be the origin of the voice. Your comrades, many we have found, they play our games. Others try to hide from us. We sense their fear, their excitement. They think they are safe. Tell me where they have gone, and I will set you free. I don't know anything about that. Do you think you can hide them with your steel and wires? I will have them. As I have you, and when your mind gives way, as so many others have, you will provide them to me. I'll never help you. You will. You cannot win this war. Your suffering feeds us, sustains us. We grow strong. You grow weak. How does it feel to be alone, one against many? You won't be winning for much longer, I promise you that. We know what you are planning, human. You care that much about your comrades. Then I will link your fate to theirs. Are you ready for my game? Your friends succeed, then you will have the code to escape. Otherwise, you will slowly expire. Now, suffer and entertain me. <laughs> Reality changes around Aaron. He finds himself trapped in a world that is no longer his own. What a strange place it's brought me to. I should take a look around. I can lie, that's not exactly what I was expecting, but sure. <laughs> Ornate sword. It's way too hot to put my hands in there. To somewhere else I can use this. Well, I think I have an idea of what to do. Some items. Promotion, expect them while they're in your hands. That's cool.
Okay. Oh, okay, I know that one already. No, wait, that's the white one. Oh. Uh, can I... Okay, so I gotta find both the eyes for that thing. <laughs> I've been stuck here for a day now, and I still can't work out this puzzle. I know that lock works differently from the no from a normal one. Move the middle mechanism up, down, left, or right. Instead of using numbers, tr this type of lock uses a combination of directions to open it. For example, instead of 1, 1, 2, 3, it could be something like right, right, down, left. To mess up the combination, push down on the silver top part of the lock to reset it. Probably related. Oh, wait. I think I'm overthinking this. Oh, okay, I get it. The n number of things is like the order. So there's one black, so that means the first one is up, and then right, and then left, and then down, and then up, and then left. It was a lot simpler than I thought it was. That's a big problem with these types of games. I overcomplicate things way too much. Okay, game. <laughs> what is the completion hash? The what? Should you make a guess? Damn it, he was right. Only the others would know what this code is. He checks his bracelet once more. The screen is still blank. I guess I'm stuck here until I hear from them. Sigrid, please hurry. I need your help. What's the code? I've had a reoccurring dream lately. It always starts in my dorm room. I wake up feeling discouraged. Hopeless, even. I have been searching for someone close to me. I am looking for a possible victim of the Botfly Killer. I tell myself there's no proof. There's no news of anyone finding a corpse. No new addition to the grown statistics. The thing is, I can't even visualize the person I'm trying to find. I only know that it's vital that I get to them before the worst happens. Maybe what I need is a distraction. I can finish that paper that's due by the end of the week. As I sit down at my desk, my phone chimes with a new message. It's from someone named Diego. It reads, What's up? I'm about to jump into a game. If you're up for it, wanna join me? Strange. I don't remember receiving messages when I had this dream before. Who's Jaeger? At least I have someone on my side. I hate the thought of going at this alone. I've only just put the phone down when it rings again. It's a call from an unknown number. Hello? I saw your friend. The one reported missing. In your flyers. Who is this? I can't talk now. Meet me in an hour. At the warehouse on Stockton Street, Southwark. I'll tell you everything you need to hear. You're not really about to do that, girl. Like, come on. <laughs> That's sus AF. But... They dropped the call. It's so strange. It sounded like the caller was using a voice changer. Why did they want to disguise their voice? This situation is setting off all sorts of alarms in my head, with everything that's going on in the world right now. 
Risking a meetup with a stranger makes me feel more than a bit uneasy. But it's my only lead. I have to follow it. I shoot a message to Yeo about the meeting. Then I grab my jacket and head out the door. It's been over an hour now and no one has shown. Was this all just a hoax? Hello? Is anyone here? No one. Wait. What's that noise? It sounds like... Flies? I take out the small knife from my pocket. To think that carrying a weapon like this on the streets of London only a year ago would have been illegal. With the spreading paranoia and rising violence, it would be stupid to walk around without any protection. Just ahead of me nestled in the shadows is a closed door. The noise is coming from there. I approach it. Reach out to touch the cold metal door handle. I feel a pulse throbbing in my head and notice that my hands are damp with sweat. But I have to know. I open the door. Where am I? I was dreaming. It's that same dream I keep having. It's not quite the same though with that Jaeger person messaging me. But it does end the same way. Opening the door to that warehouse. Where am I? Who brought me here? Hello? Is anyone there? For a moment, a deafening silence is the only reply to Sigrid's question. Wait, are those footsteps? The door to the room is forcefully opened by two men. Ah! I'm right! There is someone here. So you are. A tall, thin Asian man who looks to be in his twenties is the first through the door. He is quickly followed by a gruff-looking man with a small scar on his face. Sigurd guesses that he is most likely in his late thirties. Stay back! The demeanor of the bigger man immediately switches to something less threatening. You're okay, ma'am. There's no reason to be afraid. We're just like you, trapped in this place. Whatever it is, my name's Hunter, and this is Max. What about you? Uh, I'm Sigrid. Where am I? To be straight with you, we were hoping you might tell us. I'm sorry. My brain's all foggy. It looks like she's the same as the rest of us. We all seem to be suffering from some sort of amnesia. We just woke up and started exploring this place. It's enormous! We were trying to map it out before we stumbled into this room and found you. Sigrid, you should join us. Safety in numbers and all. There are other men and women in our group. Everyone is waiting for us in another room, not far from here. So, Sigrid, what do you say? What choice do I have at this point? It's better than being on my own. Okay, I'll come with you. That's what I like to hear. Follow us. We're back. Not alone, I see. The blonde woman has scars from burns on her hands. The long sleeves of her jacket prevent anyone from seeing how much more of her body is scarred. Sigrid takes notes of the woman's French accent. It stands out from the American accents that Max and Hunter have. Glad you're back, boys. Who's this you brought with you? Sigrid feels reassured to heal another British person. His accent originates from somewhere in London. Everyone, this is Sigrid. We found her in one of the rooms. Same story as us. Um, hello. Hmm. Nice to meet you, Sigrid. If only it were under more pleasant times. I'm Luba, by the way. The scary lady is Leah. This tall gentleman here is Dushane. Sigrid guesses that Luba's accent is Russian. Can you remember anything useful at all? <sighs> I'm afraid not. My memories are not very clear. Indeed. It's bizarre that none of us can remember how we got here. I remember I was chilling in my room, smoking, and admiring my art collection. That's it. Your art collection? Is that code for something nasty? Nah, mate. What are you talking about? I'm a serious art collector. <laughs> Hunter gives Duchesne a bit bemused look. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not judging. We all do it. <laughs> okay, buddy. Duchesne grumbles and quickly def he likes the line of questioning. And what were you doing, kid? I was doing a bit of research on the net. It felt like a pretty standard evening, except I felt afraid of something. Yeah, research on the internet can be scary if you've never been with a woman before. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> hey! Now, now, boys. Let's all try to get along. We're just playing. No harm done. Well, as for me, I was working on my computer. Programming, to be exact. Trying to fix a bug in some software I was making. It was a typical Friday night for me. 
My parents didn't let me out of the house much. Why so quiet, Max? Everything just feels like deja vu to me. Sigrid, what about you? I remember entering a dark room, and there was a buzzing noise. And that's it. I don't even remember why I was there in the first place. Leah, what about you? I was with some soldiers on a boat in the ocean, surrounded by flames. Whoa! Are you messing with us? I'm not a child. What would I gain from lying to you? Sorry, I, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that your story sounds... intense. Yeah, compared to everyone else's. <laughs> Not to be rude, but do you think that's how you got those scars? I'm reasonably sure it was. I was receiving treatment by a medic on the deck. A few of us have scars. Maybe you and Ethan were both in that ocean together? Ethan? Ah, yes. There's two more of us. Ethan and Bates are still out searching, I presume. Ethan's scars look more like knife wounds. Mine are burned. Have you all been here for a long time? We all woke up here about six hours ago. Not that you can tell what time of day it is, without clocks or sunlight. Since then, we've been taking time to explore for a way out. We haven't made much progress. There's something wrong with this place. It's a giant maze with no windows in any of the rooms. Silence fills the room for a moment. Hey, Max, you also got that scar on your lip. Maybe you were a boxer or something before this. That's from a cleft palate surgery, Hunter. Another Brit, with scars littering his arms and face, Sigurd feels somewhat comforted by the calm tone of his voice. Hey, you're back! Everyone I think will be needing your... Oh, I see we have a new addition to our growing team. An older gentleman with a German accent, Sigurd can guess that he must be have been in the military from his attire. He's kind of hot, though. Sigurd, this is Bates and Ethan. Bates is sort of our leader. Guys, this is Sigurd. We found her in one of the other rooms. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sigurd. Max? We already questioned her on what she knows, but it seems she's as clueless as the rest of us. I see. Sigrid, it seems we've found ourselves caught up in the same circumstances. We're all working to figure this out. It makes sense to work together. Can we count on your cooperation? Of course. I want to get back home. Good. I will hold you to that, Sigrid. Hey, Ethan. Got yourself a new bag? We found this in our travels, and it was full of medical supplies. I recognize most of the things in there. We found it in an infirmary, which could come in handy. Beyond that, we found an intersection in one of the hallways we explored. Since it splits into four directions, we need everyone's help to investigate the area. We'll all go in pairs. If you find something interesting, please report back to this room. Is it safe to walk around here? From what we've seen, the hallways are safe. If you run into trouble, shout for help and the rest will come running. Let's stick with this room as our meetup point. We'll take two hours for this excursion. Just estimate the time since we don't have watches. Pair up everyone. Let's get searching. Shall we team up, Sigrid? What do you say? I... sure. Why not? Great! Let's go! So, how are you feeling? Honestly, this is a lot to take in. It's like I've been working on a paper and haven't slept for days. Are you a university student then? From what I can recall, yes. Hey, it's funny that you said university instead of college. Aren't you American? <laughs> damn! You're observant. I'm actually from Korea. My parents paid for me to learn English, and my teacher was from the UK. But I was a massive fan of American TV shows, so their way of speaking rubbed off on me. That's cool. What did you do outside of here? I recall something. A game I played a lot. Sometimes I daydream of playing it, like in a tournament, you know? I think the game was my job. It's called... well... I can't recall the name, but it's a 5 on 5 battle arena. Bro, he's a League of Legends player. <laughs> My main character was this little guy that sat in a robot. He could shoot, had a flamethrower, a shield, and sometimes he would overheat and... Yeah, I'm sure you don't care about any of that. He's pretty passionate about that topic. Hmm, are you talking about that game that they showed on TV sometimes? I think I played that too. Yes, that's the one! That's so cool! Now I'm happy we found you. What's your handle? We should link up once we get out of here. I'll let you know as soon as it comes back to me. Ugh, god, my head. I hate this feeling. Do you think we were drugged? I don't think so. 
Ethan said we probably would have suffered some noticeable side effects. So, um... Can, can I talk to you about something? Please don't be something weird. Um, sure. I didn't mention this to anyone earlier, but I did some exploring on my own. Did you? Yep. I happened to find something, too. I didn't mention it to the others since Bates told us to always stick together. I didn't want to get scolded by the old man. To be honest, I planned to lead us there and make it look like we stumbled upon it by chance. You can consider me revealing my devious plans to you as a sign of trust. Hunter grabs the handle of a nearby door. We gamers have to stick together after all. Hunter opens the door and the pair steps inside. 